I say optimizing practice, what do you think I mean by that? Does any any kids have any idea what I'm talking about? And, or, yes? To make the most out of your time. Okay, to make the most out of the time. Yes, that's true. Very true. Anyone else? Well, I'll leave it at that where it said making the most out of your time. What I want you to understand is there is a level of focus and intensity, yet relaxation, which needs to be executed on a court in order to perform at your full potential. Now, when you are focused properly, and I want the parents to understand this as well as the kids, when you are focused properly, you will develop and improve at least five times faster than when we go out and we're kind of hitting. And what I mean by that is it's how you focus on each ball. When you come in here, there I can look like this, and I'm hitting, and I'm just kind of... And I'm swinging, and I'm, I'm making some shots, and yes, there is some level of improvement. But if you were to stand on the side of the court, like I have, either playing against, you know, I've played against many of the all-time greats in competition. I used to practice with uh, Jimmy Connors, who you, many of you younger ones may not even know, Jimmy Connors, a uh, guy named Petus Gerolitis, John McEnroe, uh, Brian Godfrey, Harold Solomon, uh, Eddie Dibbs, these are all top ten player, number one in the world, some of them number one in the world. This is what I practice with. And then often played against many of the all-time greats. And then, you know, over the years, like for example, um, you go back for the, the folks that are, are um, a little bit more senior, you have people like Stan Smith, Billy Nastasi, they were both number one in the world. And then you go to People like uh, Yvonne Lendl and Guillermo Vilas, and they were number one in the world, and John McEnroe and Jimmy Connors and Bjorn Borg and all these people. And what do you think you would notice if you were standing right on the side of the court and watching them hit? What do you think you would notice? Is there anything? Yes. They have intensity. Yes. Anything else? I'll tell you, we jump out at you. What if you're, you're right here, like I am, and they're hitting right there. So let's say you're sitting there, and, and I have to be one of the great players. You know what you would notice? You would notice their eyes if you're watching closely. You wouldn't see this. If they're really practicing at full speed and intensity, You'd see them moving and watching, and then on the hit, you'd see their eyes totally like open on the hit. Their facial muscles would be generally relaxed, and they'd be totally absorbed in the hit. And you can literally see that focus right there in what they're trying to do on each hit. It's impressive. And if you're watching him play points, Andre Agassi. Uh, Pete Sampras, uh, Lindsey Davenport, I mean, I can't, Monica Sells, you go down a whole list. These are all players that then I was on the court with during practices with my players. Jim Courier, you know, all, all time greats. Some of them I worked with, some of them I didn't, you know. But the point is amazing. You watch this like boom, and this boom on each ball, and you see them play points. And if you're ever right there in competition. Like sometimes I'm sitting during the US Open, like right on the court during matches in the in the in the pit. And you're watching this concentration and focus on the hit. It's incredible. You see the brain functioning. And this is where they practice. This is where the great ones practice. Not the average ones, but the great ones. They might, they warm up, and once they get going, the intensity, the focus, and the purpose. Now, in addition to this, 
in addition to this. This is where I want all the parents to hear me. This is where the secret is in the training. Big secret. It's then the great ones, not just in tennis, but in all the different fields, receive the mistakes differently than the average ones. Very differently. The average player, who's good, he's working hard, they're hitting the ball to focus, they hit a ball and they go, oh no, you know, and it's like, not that we enjoy making the mistake, but they focus in on, oh no, I made a mistake, kind of I failed, or they're, you know, they're upset, and, and that becomes their process. Oh, I, you know, that was terrible. Let me go to the next one. What do you think great ones do? How do you think they vary? Yeah? They repeat until they get it perfect. They repeat until they get it perfect? Um, they will try to make an adjustment to see what they do wrong. Try to make an adjustment to see what they do wrong. If, if somebody was great at math, all right, let's say, let's say you have a brilliant, not just average, brilliant mathematician, young protege, unbelievable, all right? And let's say we gave them a math problem, and he got it wrong, or she got it wrong. Do you think they go, oh, no, wow, how did, oh. I thought I had it right. You think that's how they'd approach it? How would they approach it? They'd approach it like, hmm, okay, got that wrong. Well, what did I do? And they'd kind of try to figure out, and they'd embrace. Did you hear what I just said? They would embrace the challenge. They would embrace the mistake in a positive way so that they'd learn, wouldn't they? It's, okay, I've got, oh, this is where I made the mistake. I could do this, this, and that. And then if they didn't get it right the first time, what, they go throw up their hands and say, oh, I'm just having a turn. No, they keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Now, when you're out on a court, this is a secret. You've got to combine the two. Here, focus, intensity, purpose on each hit. You're right here in the moment trying to execute the shot properly, moving right in there. Then when we make the mistake, and we will, we embrace, oh, a little bit low. Let me go oh, a little higher. Oh, that's a little too long. Yeah, oh, that was right. And then again, focus. Oh, that was in the net. Again, and pushing and pushing and pushing. And then, do you think when they're hitting, they try to just push the ball in the court? No, no. Now, it doesn't mean they're trying to rip it as hard as they can, but they're trying to hit the highest quality shot. So they're coming, executing the highest quality shot they can, right? They're totally focused. And right here on the hip, this is another secret to it. When they're here, they're very aware of where they want to hit. Their eyes stay right here on the hit. Then what they do is when they make a mistake, they read the situation and they grow from it. They embrace the mistake, not that they're joyous about making a mistake, but they see it as their opportunity to build. How? you receive the mistakes will determine how fast you improve. And it's by pushing to your limits of the quality. So I'm going to try to hit the ball the highest quality that I can, as well as I can, knowing I'm going to miss some and I'm going to make some. But when I miss, I'm going to go to the next one, and that's how you build and build and quickly learning, growing. Now, what often happens with young ones? What happens when they, they make a mistake? Yeah. They get upset. They get upset. 
they think of it as a negative. And I hope all the parents are hearing me on this. Because the making errors or mistakes when somebody is attempting to do things right is a positive. When they are not focused on the right things, when they're worried about, oh, I'm afraid of missing, and so on, then it's not a positive. Then it's counterproductive. So the idea is to approach the training with focus, intensity, but a joyous passion to be everything you can be and embrace the challenges. What do I mean by joyous passion? If somebody is passionate about something, they, it's really important. They feel very, very strongly about it. They're passionate. Somebody could be passionate in a, in a bad way, you know, about bad things. Or you can be passionate about something that's really positive and beneficial, like in this case, playing tennis. So I use the term joyous passion. <clears throat> you want to watch great players when they're really pushing to be the best they can be. And they are filled with a joyous passion, an intensity, yet a relaxation, and a relentless, relentless, pursuit of constantly improving. This is where greatness is found. Now, I don't know if you have seen this recent commercial with Ste uh, Stephen Curry, or what's the kid from the Golden State Warriors. He's the MVP in basketball. You know, he's an amazing scorer. Uh, just tremendous, tremendous player. He's the best shooter I've ever seen in basketball. And the scouting reports on him were not very good. They said not very explosive, uh, not very strong, not great in defense, can get pushed around, all this stuff. Yet right now he is. And they said that he wouldn't make it as a guard in the NBA. They were wrong. But I can assure you, if you ever watch him play and shoot, that he understands this concept. He's not the greatest athlete. He doesn't jump as high as everyone else. But he's the best in the NBA. And you watch the top golfer in the world, who's the young kid that's out there, won two titles, like major titles. Speed. Hmm? Speed. Jordan Speed? Yeah, Jordan's Speed. 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 Well, Jordan. I'll just call him Jordan. <laughs> He's not the biggest and the strongest and the hitting the ball is farthest. But his focus and concentration is extraordinary. And you would see that focus and that mindset in training, I guarantee you. And I want you to understand something. I'll use this analogy. Analogy is kind of like an example. I'm going to go flying today. Okay? Really, in a jet. Uh, I like to fly the jets. Okay? And when I go into the simulator, do you know the simulator? That's where you practice. They simulate on the screen, and you know, you take off, and then you land, and all that. And, you know, I was in there this morning, and yeah, I was crashing. You know, I, I took off and I was off balance and I crashed the plane and then landing I crashed, you know, a few times. But don't worry about it. When I get out there in the real thing, I'll do it fine. That's when I'll really turn it on. Who wants to fly with me? <laughs> no? No, no, you don't understand. When I get into the real thing, that's when I turn it on. Do I sound ridiculous? No. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Kind of. So, the training and the practice and the quality is where it's at. That's where the greatness is found because it carries over onto a court. So, when you go to hit, 
be focused. Be intense, yet relaxed. When you make a mistake, try to learn from that mistake, be very precise, and improve. And then, and only then, if you struggle, then a coach can give you good, quality, crisp, brief feedback into what you need to do to improve, and that helps cut the learning curve. So if they give you, if you're missing three or four balls and you're really focused, you're doing everything, you're not really sure why, and you're trying to problem solve, and the coach says, oh, you've got to get the ball, you know, a little bit farther away from you, they can cut the learning curve. But remember, this is for all the parents out there, it's very, very, very important that the player struggles. If they don't, struggle, there's not great improvement going on. It's how they embrace the struggle and look at the struggle. <laughs> you don't want to be that person with the little ones where you've taken the wheels off the, the, the bike, the training wheels, and the child is capable of riding on their own, but you're running along the whole time making sure they don't fall. Does that help them? And every time they get a little wobbly, you correct it out and you keep falling along. What do you think happens? Do you master it? No. It's called enabling. So there's a balance. And we want the players to embrace mistakes in a positive way so that they grow. This is one of the secrets to greatness. And the ones that achieve a greatness I'm talking greatness, are the ones that understand this. So you want to be the best you can be in tennis, that's one of the keys, one of the secrets. If you want to carry that over into all aspects of your life, you'll achieve extraordinary things. Okay? So at that, I'm going to wrap this up for now. I just wanted to share that with you, and then um, we can discuss this individually.